Hello, you're back with, uh, this is your host, Daryl McKell Brooks with the On Fire Show. We've been doing this for like 40 minutes now, trying to get this right for Steve Martino uh, from the book, The Final Reality. And uh, he's an awesome writer, and I know he's frustrated like me, so we're going to try to add him on uh, soon. And I'd like to say hello to everyone. How you been doing today? It's been a great day. And he has the book, The Final Reality. This is the On Fire Show. I'll be getting these people logging on and saying some things, and I'm waiting for Steve Martino. Hello, Steve. Are you there? I sent you an invite. And um, this is your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. And uh, it's one of these days, you know, I have my coffee. I have my coffee right now. I have good coffee. And... Um, All right, I am I'm waiting for Steve Martino from the uh, author of The Final Reality and also he's co-author, co-producer of Enhanced Interrogation, the movie. And uh, this is your host, Daryl McKell Brooks. Hello. Okay, all right. I'm adding Steve Martino on. Hey, it just I'm adding you on, Steve, and um, waiting for him to come on and uh, to uh, say something or hi. Uh, he's coming on right now. Hey, Wayne Hunter, hey, Michelle Moore, uh, and some other ones who are watching. Uh, waiting for Steve Martino. He's adding. I'm adding in, and uh, this is the On Fire Show with uh, Don McKell Brooks. Technology is something. <laughs> and um, uh, Danny Cal, hi, still there. Hi, Danny. Thank you for still being there. You know, I'm waiting for Steve. You know, he's uh, he has his great book. He has three great books. He wants to, he's going to talk about, and uh, I'm just adding him on. And I'm just still waiting. Steve Martino. You it's about Danny. Yeah, it's it's about. <laughs> it, you know, Steve. It's Steve. It's about time. I, I'm sure. You know, hey, Steve. It, it, that was an act of God. Okay. It doesn't look good for neurosurgeons. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get on. Uh, hey, I, 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 I'm actually still not sure how I actually did it. Yeah, well, we did it. We, hey, the, <laughs> this is the final reality. <laughs> it's so, easy, it, I think it's easier to write the book than actually... Uh, Figure out how to use Facebook. Yeah, the fine. This is the final reality right here, <laughs> the hidden reality. So, Steve, how you doing? Good. How you doing, my man? So pretty good. Can you you can hear me? Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, Danny said hi. hi. Danny said hi, hi. Doing, and, and uh, Wayne Hunter said hi, Steve. Uh, we're go we're talking about the. I, I invited you on because I know you you know you're a great writer and you're part of Enhanced Interrogation. Uh, you're one of the co-writers and co-producers, and so am I. But we want to talk about your book, The Final Reality. And uh, basically, we got an hour. So uh, you have, matter of fact, you have more than just uh, this one book, Final Reality. You have two other books, right? Right. Now, tell, yeah. us, about, tell us about the two other books, the first one. Well, well uh, actually, it all leads up to the final book I just wrote here. You know, it, it, it's set in the future. You know, and the premise of the entire novel series is about what happens when um, our government, which is financially broke, and you know the governments from around the world become financially broke, and you know the banks actually call on their debts. And as you know, most of the people who run the banks are 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 the, the, the multi billionaires that 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 run basically run the countries. So what if what if the bankers took over the world? And that, that's the premise of the book. Um, it's sort of a warning to us uh, with, our, with our spending, with our deficit spending, even with, uh, with the Donald Trump's new, new budget right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was so, it, it, it's $4.1 trillion. I mean, mm -hmm. how are we going to pay for this? Yeah. So this is just the net consequences of what happens in the very end. And, and then I'm a science nerd, so basically um, in, in the final reality, I basically go back and ask the question, what happens 
when the world is taken over by the financial elite and how do we go back and take our country back, get our liberty, get our civil liberties back. Of um, course. So, and, it, and then it gets back into uh, different aspects and uh, high, high, high concept theories such as megalithic structures around the, the earth, such as the pyramids of Giza, such as Puma Punku, ancient maps. My, my thought is, you know, the, the great biblical flood, which is in the Bible and written about in over 250 spots around the globe, was an actual event. It's been, it's been written in China. It's been written here in, by our Native Americans, South America. It's been written in Hawaii. So it's well, the story's well across the globe that there was a massive biblical flood. And after reading multiple uh, books about it, I actually said, you know, what if there was some great technology many, many years ago that was lost? And what if we start discovering it, but in the midst of discovering it, we set in motion the same cataclysmic events that destroyed the planet in the, in the great biblical flood. So that's how my book uh, begins. Okay. Now you had, that was the, the first one. The first one was what? The, that the first one was actually the new reality, the new reality, the hidden reality. And now it's the final reality. Now, uh, the hidden reality, what was that one about basically? Well, you know, it, it's kind of, it kind of a kind of a timely manner right now. It's theoretically what would happen if we got all the great people who lived in the earth, such as Albert Einstein, uh, maybe Thomas Edison, Tesla, Alexander the Great, um, and cloned them and brought them into our world now. Wow. How would it be like for them? Wow. And as you know, you, you've read the news recently you see that genetic cloning of humans is now possible. Mm. And, you know, it may be, it may be possible, but it is ethical. Yes. So, you know, it goes into the ethics of it, but the, the nice thing about the book is you, you're, you're putting some of the greatest minds head to head against each other and, and, and a financial, political and economic battle mm -hmm. and to see who's the brightest and who wins. Actually, it leaves you on a cliffhanger to my final book, um, uh, uh, The Final Reality. So let's talk about your, your book, Cloning. Is that possible to um, go in? Is it possible? Because I know you're a neurosurgeon, so you know you're a very intelligent, <laughs> you're, the brightest, you're the brightest of the brightest, you know? <laughs> well, thank you. I hang out with you, so I have to be thankful. <laughs> so is, is, is that possible? Uh, to clone to, like, say, if let's say we wanted to go in Thomas Edison's grave, you know, unearth Thomas Edison and 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 get his DNA. Is the it possible answer, to clone the, him? You know, the, as of right now, the answer is theoretically yes. Wow. The, the newest wow. data out is that we can th theoretically clone him. You know, I don't know how successful it will be. They've cloned pigs. They've cloned dogs. They've cloned goats. Uh, but now they say they clone humans. It's, it's a huge step in, in, in the future, in, taken in the future. Um, so, you know, the, in theory, the, the answer is yes. So if you want to clone Albert Einstein, you have some uh, DNA, you know, go clone him. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's... We, that's... Could, clone, we could clone you, Daryl. Oh, man. Take about five of you. I need about five of me to take over the planet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so... Uh... The final reality. And so, you know, tell us, tell the audience right now who's watching and the future audience about the final reality. And, you know, and, and what made you, uh, is, is there other books you're planning? But let's just talk about the final reality. Well, there's always a lot of books I'm planning. Actually, I just got, got a few books on uh, Tesla because his life and his history is really, really exciting. But uh, one of the things that's always really interests me Back in 1938 to 39, you had the, the Nazi expedition into, into Tibet. Now, and when you look at how they did their spin machine called an Anunnabi over in Germany, they spun it as a great expedition looking for the Aryan race. Now, when you go into Tibet, I mean, you don't see blonde hair, blue eyed people. Uh, you see exactly opposite. So when they said that they were going into Tibet to find the Aryan race, 
you know, it, it's kind of hard to believe that you go into Tibet to, to find an Aryan race when they look nothing like you. So what were the Germans looking for? You know, that it spawned off theories about Indiana Jones, but and other movies. But it, w when you look at the, the information, you, you really find out that um, in the beginning, they were out after something. Mm. We don't know what it was. But it, w when you look back at their history, the Nazi Germany, there was they were always looking for the Wunderwaffe, the Wonder Weapon. And, and I theorize that they were going into Tibet to find that 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 uh, Wunderwaffe. Now, my accounts are di taken directly off of uh, the accounts when the Germans went into uh, Tibet. It was taken off their diaries. It was taken off uh, different expeditions. So everything in it is verbatim uh, based upon about three or four different books I read. The ending's a little bit different and because in theory, I, I said they found something. And when they found it, they said that that's when they start setting into motion the same thing that was set into motion 10, 12,000 years ago uh, prior to the great uh, biblical flood. Oh, okay. This wonder weapon, you know, when I was I always watch the History Channel, and they talk about how the Germans would always look for this wonder weapon, the special weapon that would, you know, give them a... a, a um, a boost to fight in World War Two, and but there's something that they never were found. Now, all of the history of the, the world has always been a a search for these wonder weapons and these these uh, weapons that can uh, destroy other countries. Yeah, exactly. In battle. Even two months before the Germans surrendered, mm -hmm. what happened was Eisenhower and the leaders of the Allied forces said we could still lose this war with Germany. So, because they feared that they had uh, the, the wonder weapon. They mm -hmm. feared that they had the nuclear bomb. And actually there's, there is good evidence now that they actually did, were able to, to create nuclear uh, fission. And, uh, you know, we're at the very onset of, of creating a, a nuclear bomb. There's also uh, evidence that they're working on some higher technology using zero point energy. They had something known as de Glocka. Uh, it, it's also known as a bell that was in Poland. And they thought it, it dealt with something called zero spin energy. Oh, okay. Uh, zero spin energy is something that uh, um, was written about in ancient Indian texts from India, like the Mahatma Bharata. In theory, what they did in the Mahatma Bharata and all these ancient Indian texts is they described great machines running, um, floating, basically using the power of mercury, using zero point energy, mm -hmm. and to translate it, uh, uh, versions of those ancient books. It's their Sanskrit. And, 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 and theoretically, the people are now looking back at, at, at the German experiments and saying, were they on to some zero point energy mm -hmm. uh, type of project? Uh, so, but what happened was there were 32 scientists that were in uh, the program. And as the, the Russians were moving westward, they shot all 32, seven, 32 scientists in the head twice to make sure no one survived to tell the story of what this wonder weapon was. Wow, really? Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of scientists came out of uh, Germany. You know, we, couldn't have, we couldn't have put the man on the moon without without the, the German scientists. They were all Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they, they were all Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very interesting. Now, in your final reality, uh, you know, what made you uh, decide to write about, you know, what was about these, the realities, the final reality? What was it about it, these, these books that you decided to write that was, that wanted, you know, you were so excited about writing? This, this on these issue on this issue. Well, you know, as I'm saying, the backdrop is uh, economic financial ruin and how uh, uh, the, the the financiers, the people, the banks were lent, getting money from, calling their loans. Mm -hmm. That's taking on, on the backdrop of the Germans looking for this wonder weapon and leading them back to the great biblical flood. Because the technology they stumble upon was the same technology that the ancients uh, used 
which causes devastating flood. And we, we look back into ancient, a, a, ancient literature and we look at some of the great me megalithic structures around the globe and you ask yourself, was there this great knowledge that has been lost? We're looking at 2,200 tw ton stones scattered across the, the entire world that even today we couldn't move. Mm -hmm. So yes, how, how could these ancient societies move 200 ton stones mm -hmm. that are laser cut sharp on all four corners? I mean, how was that done? Hey, Steve, I got a question. Uh, uh, guy said, Wayne Hunt, I read that uh, German scientists wanted Hitler to wait at least two years before he started the war so they would make a wonder weapon possible. Yeah, there's two reasons why Hitler started the war early. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and one of the things came out early, just recently, was that Poland started militarizing their Western Front and were st sending all their, their military up to it. And when they saw that, they, they, they knew that, you know, it's straight now or wait till they actually are able to mount a, a formidable fight. Also, Hitler's, Hitler was impatient and he had, he had health problems. So he knew that there was a finite time he, he had to live. Because when you look at his final pictures, he actually had uh, advanced stage Parkinson's. So people who say that maybe he's lived years after... I mean, he had advanced stage Parkinson's near the end. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a couple reasons. And, and, and with Blitzkrieg, when you look at the strategies of Blitzkrieg, you don't, you don't let people get the defenses up. You don't let them make, you don't let them fortify like their Maginot line. Mm -hmm. they, they saw, the, they saw the, 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 the people of Poland uh, were mounting forces. They knew Russia, they, they, they signed an agreement with Russia um, which basically said, you know, a, a non-offensive. Stalin, Stalin sat in his room for two to three weeks uh, in, in disbelief, and he couldn't even talk to anyone because he was so shocked that Hitler invaded Russia. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, Hitler, Hitler, you know, thought Russia, he thought the Russians were were one were were subhumans. So wow. it comes as wow. no surprise they want to. Uh, 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 attack Russia. But now, yeah, a couple things added up where he didn't want to go straight into, uh, he didn't want to wait. Now your book and final, too. Okay, now your book, Final Reality. Uh, when we look at what's happening in the world today, how close is your book? And parts of your book are, you know, you can look at reality now, things that are happening now. How close is it? Well, the, the first one was kind of ironic because it had it dealt with a virus that breaks, gets loose, and starts wreaking havoc across the country. Mm -hmm. And actually, the virus and, and the new reality was accidentally released when we were doing genetic manipulation. Like today, when we're trying to clone, if you actually activate genes that have been inactive in our genome, because eight, over 80%, 90%, uh, a lot, a, a large portion of our genes are silent. If you start activating these things, who knows what you're activating? Mm -hmm. now, a lot of that junk that's not used in our DNA, you, are, you can find old viruses and infections in there. So what if you activated one of these when trying to clone someone mm -hmm. and, and it gets loose? You know, that's the theory of, of the first book. The second book, I, I, I talk about genetic cloning. And the third book, I'm really talking about uh, economics and and the financial ruin of being in twenty trillion dollars of debt. You look at Greece. You look at uh, our country. You look at all of Western Europe. We're spending ourselves into uh, servitude. And our wow. so into servitude. so you know what are your what are your predictions of you looking like we're in two thousand eighteen. Let's say another ten years if we keep spending. And uh, what are your predictions? I mean, like in ten more years from now, what do you think will happen? Uh, well. You know, it's because, you know, like you said, you keep spending, we spend, we spend, we spend. And uh, somehow, you know, is, uh, are we going to, are our children going to be taxed to death? You know, and, or, or what are your, what are your predictions? Well, uh, that's, that's in theory, that's, a, that's the only thing that's going to have happen. Uh -huh. And we're, gonna, we're, we're all going to be in servitude based upon our, our crippling debt. Or you could do what the, everyone's done in the past, 
how, how do you forget about economic debt? You start another war. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. You well, can start you know, yeah, I, I mean, mean that, 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 that's what happens with financial ruin. And I mean, we look what happened in World War II. And, you know, uh, it's, it was, you know, the war well, it brought us out of, uh, out of debt. Right. And, yeah. And, 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 and you ask yourself, why, why do we stay in such depression for so long? I mean, that, that was a really, really long depression. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole different story. You know, uh, the, the, the a Roosevelt, had these economic plans, which in retrospect, when you look at the unemployment rate at the very beginning of the depression and at the very end of the depression, it was about the same. It really never touched jobs and, um, and, and never really created economic growth in this country. Mm -hmm. The only thing that really did was the war machine brought great economic growth. You yeah. know, it's not, not how you want to do it, but, but that, that's how we got out of the depression. Yeah, because, you know, when uh, we talk about our war machine in America, I remember, you know, uh, under Eisen Eisenhower, you know, when they, when they built the nuclear missiles, uh, it was <laughs> under Eisenhower, you know, more, I think it was more nuclear missiles was, was built in any time in history. And then when he uh, about to re retire, he questioned the uh, war machine in his, in his right. speech, the, you know, the war machine. And he said that uh, we would have to watch out for the industrial uh, the war machine. And so when we look at what's happening in our society, when you look at even with Bush, uh, George W. Bush and with the weapons of mass destruction, making money off of uh, war, uh, you know, and, and we look at with Obama and, you know, we look at with our President Trump and they always talk about President Trump. You know, I remember this one uh, girl said that President Trump was going to start a war with North Korea, which, you know, I don't I don't think that he's, he's looking to start any wars in North Korea. But, uh, well, It'll happen if, you know, in four years, another four years, that we keep getting in debt. I mean, is there any way to get out of debt, like, as you can see, foreseen in the future? Well, I mean, that's, that's a whole different discussion of how, how you actually get someone in debt. You know, if, 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 if the best way of getting out of debt is to stop spending. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, can we, can, I mean, has America ever stopped spending? I mean, is there no. any period? Has there any period in history uh, in America, you know, of all the presidents, and uh, we have any president been basically good on debt? No, I really, I mean, no, no time recent is good in debt. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you could look over the last hundred years, the, the, no, no, no time is, is good in debt. And with the military industrial complex growing so great and war such a bust, you know, you, know, you ask yourself who, 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 who uh, is Lockheed Martin and uh, have their hands in a lot of people, politicians' uh, pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look retrospectively, you know, who benefits from these wars? It's the military industrial complex. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's kind of like sad when the military, the military industrial complex, when you have, uh, you know, you have young kids that are fighting, you know, we have our young kids in high school and they're graduating from high school and going right to the uh, military. And they have no clue. They have no clue what's happening. You know, uh, you talk about the weapons of mass destruction. You know, when Bush said there was weapons of mass destruction and there were young kids who went off the war and realized that the war was a lie. And I think, you know, even Trump talked about that. You know, and so the idea is that, you know, and, and you look at Halliburton. How much money did Halliburton make? You know, who was, <laughs> you know. It's uh, a sin. Yeah, huh? No, it's a sin. Yeah, it's a, and I mean retrospectively, you can look back at George Bush and say his entire Middle East strategy was a failure. Yeah, totally. And, and, and li lives were, were wasted. Our brave soldiers, uh, you know, coming back. I treat the patients with uh, traumatic brain injuries. You know, their arms, legs blown off. You know, it's it's sad. It's sad. And now, and and, and, and uh, you know, we're still fighting over there. Yeah. And so, you know, one of the things I know that you're a neurosurgeon and uh, you work on the brain. We have 20, I mean, I don't know if we're still, we have 22 American soldiers killing themselves every day. And, you know, and, and what is the psychic of these young kids when, who are committing suicide? You know, why are they committing suicide? Because I was with a, uh, a veteran, uh, he was in, he fought in Vietnam. And he talked about, you know, well, you know, we didn't commit suicide like that. And so why are these young kids who are in their 20s and early 30s committing suicide? 
Well, you know, a lot, a lot of the vets from Vietnam were. A lot of them became alcoholics. A lot, a lot of them came back to a, a place that didn't respect them, called them baby killers. Uh, you know, we, we, we've come a long way into respecting our militaries and veterans a lot better than we did back in the 60s mm -hmm. and 70s. But he, he, these kids and people are really faced with seeing horrible things happen. And by nature, you know, you know, I think humanity is good. And and when you see horrible things, you know, it, you're not supposed to see those things and you just don't forget them. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you, you hear the stories from vets, uh, I, I've, I've talked to a couple of vets, you know, that later in life, they come out and tell me what, what actually happened. And, you know, it, it's like you, you, you understand why if you're living with that, a lot of them have survivor's guilt. They're, you're, they're living with the, those thoughts and post-traumatic stress or what they used to call shell shock. Um, sometimes I, I really don't think it takes much uh, to, 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 to want to think of suicide. Mm -hmm. And yeah. even also with young kids in America today, you know, a lot of young kids are committing suicide. You know, it's it, has that any has that changed? In, you know, the, from the you know eighties and nineties to now, where you have young kids that are, are you know, don't see a problem. You know, uh, killing themselves. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I see today mm -hmm. is a drug overdoses. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more drug overdoses. Opiate. Yeah, yeah. they're and they're lacing these these drugs with different drugs and the strains are a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing a lot of people taking something or taking something for the first time and just stop breathing. I mean, that's the real problem. And even, even prescription drugs, mm -hmm. you start mixing them together. You know, you, you just don't know what you're going to get. That, you know, that's what we're seeing now. And, and uh, we're talking about depression. You know, it's, 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 uh, you know, we have these young kids who are very depressed. You know, I've, I watched a documentary when I seen these young kids, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, depressed, you know, and, and, and their parents don't know how, they're, you know, their kids are, are suffering from depression. I mean, what is it, something on television? Is something's in the community? Is it bullying? Uh, is it just something uh, in the genes, psychologically? I mean, you know, what do you think it is? I mean, you're a neurosurgeon. You deal with the mind. Well. It's, it's multifactorial. I mean, mm -hmm. there is definitely a genetic component. If depression runs in your family, sure, there, there's a neurochemical imbalance, you know, and certain things in life can set you off. Could it be school bullying? Could it be stress in school? Could it be stress from home? Mm -hmm. Could it just be a, a, a poor uh, parent? I mean, uh, you know, they just don't have proper support or, or loving support from a family. Uh, or are the people getting in, in, in the wrong crowds? Mm -hmm. you know, I, uh, yeah, there's a lot, it's a lot of things that cause depression. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think life, I mean, a lot of people come to see me and I think the stress, stress of life, trying, you know, the economy has been difficult trying to make a living, trying, you know, being a single mom, trying, trying to get food on the table, mm -hmm. work, working two jobs, you know, um, so yeah, a, a question I always wanted to ask, you know, you're a neurosurgeon and, and when you see young kids today, uh, they have Grand Theft Auto and they're playing Grand Theft Auto, you know, at three, four years old until he's 16. And then you have also in the suburbs, you know, that's how I tell you, you got the black kids playing Grand Theft Auto and then you got the white kids in the suburb and their parents are giving them these uh, military games. You know, or, right. you know these 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 games that they give them a five year old, you know, M sixteen game that killing up. You know, and they've been playing these video games since they were five, and they're now sixteen, seventeen years old. And, and even in the city African American community, we have Grand Theft Auto, where all you know is killing and raping and shooting. Uh, does that play a role in violence as they grow older, get older? You wonder. I mean, I don't have an answer. But I'm sure in some ways it does numb you to violence. Mm -hmm. You know, even now, even watching a lot of things on TV with the violence, what I see coming in to the emergency room, sometimes you don't feel as shocked as I think you should be when you see it in some ways. Because mm -hmm. you've seen a lot in video games and on TV. Now, it may numb you, but... Yeah, I do think it takes a different type of person to go one step further, 
you know, I, I do think there is some something something more off about a person to want to actually be numb as a, you know, and then another type of person that actually wants to go do it. Mm. There is there is some there's some psychopathology that's there. Oh, okay. Now back to your book, the doctor Vera. Tell me who is Alex? Alex with Alex Pella. Right? Well, Alex Alex is the main character. Mm -hmm. He's an interesting guy yeah. because you see you see him mature throughout the three novels. He always feels like there's something missing in his life. He's searching for it uh, with with work, with relationships. Um, he actually starts having these flashbacks to a time, you know, an ancient time when he and he doesn't understand what all this means. Um, and what he finds out in my second novel is that he is actually the reincarnated from um, Alexander the Great. Wow. So, yeah, that, that's what makes him special because Alexander the Great was arguably the greatest military leader in, in, in the world. So he is the, the main protagonist in the novel. Mm -hmm. You know, and needless to say, he, he's a smart guy, has both physical and mental prowess um, that he's trying to go against the, the big bankers and the big company companies that are, that are economically enslaving the, uh, the, the, uh, the planet. And it also goes into the theory of, of quantum physics, because at a, at a quantum level, you know, this gets kind of deep, uh, time doesn't exist. When you look at um, Albert Einstein, he said time is an illusion. In the quantum level, you know, time is an illusion. What happened before, what happens now, what happens in the future is, it is all happening at once. Um, you know, so I, I propose a theory that when you when you read the Bible, it said we are created in God's image. I said, what what if what if uh, being a neurologist, I, I said, what if the image we're, we're created is in our brain, you know, and and in our brain, if if it works on a quantum level, which many people believe, you know, if you can somehow enter enter this quantum state, you know, you can, uh, you know, the, the theoretical thing is if you have a clone. Maybe at, at a quantum level, they share something or are able to communicate. And that's what you find Alex has been doing all these years. In some way, he's in communication, not direct, but indirect communication through almost dreams. They're sharing each other's lives at a different time in a different place. So, Wow, wow, wow. What made you think of that? Well, you know, I was reading about the brain, and, and they said that uh, the brain on a quantum level Mm -hmm. um, is a is a, a huge quantum generator. And if you can generate um, quantum fields around you, um, it, it has great implications. And I, and I always look at the implications like, you know, how, how can you look across the room and know that, you know, you may like that person, may not like that person, or instantly hit it off with that person without without ever really even knowing them. Mm -hmm. In theory, it, the, the, uh, the writers I read, the, these, these neuroscientists believe that you're in the same quantum state mentally as they are. So if the fields are correct, you're drawn to that person. Oh, wow. You, you may like that person mm -hmm. or you, you, may, you may, may become best friends at, at once. I mean, you, you, you've met you've met some uh, you, you've met some um, people that you instantly like. It's like, why do you instantly like those people? I mean, I. I mean, it seems kind of odd, but certain things, you know, draw you towards people or away from some people. Yeah, like like when I first met you, I said, oh, I like this guy, Steve. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you know, back, you know uh, about uh, a couple years ago, I was watching the Glenn Beck show, and uh, Glenn Beck talked about the cyborg. And he said, man and machine are, are, will be working together and if you remember when you used to watch the cyborgs they used to have it was those movies and oh, yeah, cartoons and and human beings Star Trek. chips in their head chips in their eyes and chips you know they could they have machine and have uh have human um what do you see about that now i mean i mean and We're you there. know when you have chips and they're, they're now putting chips i'm uh, watching documentary documentaries they're now putting chips in people's heads and and so they can see better or they can, you know, deal with certain types of diseases and neurological problems. Well, well actually, there's a good question here, too. But I could tell you this. I was involved in an operation two days ago. Where we put a chip in someone's head. 
uh, we, we, two operations over the last week. One, we put a chip so someone can hear um, going into their inner ear. And another one, uh, uh, these, these um, probes were put in someone's brain and programmed so, so the Parkinson's and tremors will get under control. Yeah. So we're there. And uh, he, the question says, do you think that the, the, the chemicals we put in the food, can you see that? I only got half the message. Do you think that the chemicals they put in the food, what's that say, Daryl? You see that comment? What? Oh, oh, uh, okay. Have uh, the cases of autism gone up? No, the, uh, do you think the chemicals that they put in the food? Oh, yeah. Do, do you think the chemicals they put in the food hurt? hurt us and why has uh, the cases of, do you believe that cases of autism has went up, gone up? Well, I, I do think that what they put in the food does hurt you. I mean, I, I think time and time again, uh, some of these chemicals have been proven to be toxic, carcinogenic, um, and, and actually unhealthy for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I do think and even these preservatives, you sometimes wonder, like they were, were never meant to be in our body. And uh, the, the damage that they're causing, we don't really know. The inflammation, because our body actually rejects some of these, these chemicals. And as mm -hmm. we know, the more rejection, the more inflammation we have in our body, the higher rate of stroke, heart attack, wow. infections that can, can occur. So, you know, our body's not meant for these chemicals. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, the better the diet you have, the more natural diet you have, the less chemicals, the better you're able to digest it, the better you're able to function. Um, do I think that the, 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 the amount of autism has gone up? Yeah, when you look at, when you look at the numbers, every time I look at it, unfortunately, the numbers have, have gone up. Now it's one in 88. You know, the, the, the studies have shown that, that immunizations have, do not cause it. I mean, the studies, when you look at them, they're basically irrefutable in a way when you look at it mathematically. But I'll be honest, when I see my own kids get their shots, they weren't right for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so you really do think, uh, Dal, do the shots cause it? You mm -hmm. know, and I, I throw this out as just almost being hypothetical to you. If, if you knew that these, the shots, maybe in one in 100 kids, would would or one in one thousand kids would cause problems, but it would save maybe one in twenty kids from a horrible disease. You know, would the ends justify the means? Mm. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is something that we don't know. All, all I do know is that the the, the incidence has gone dramatically up. Well, we're able to diagnose it better, but the amount of diagnosing um, is it doesn't explain such a hike. And okay. I don't really have any good ideas of how, uh, of, you know, uh, of, of other reasons why it would go up. There's a lot of literature on it, yeah. but I, I wish I had something concrete to say. Now, now, now question with, um, go back to chips putting in people's head. Do you think that a chip can make a person, eventually make a person smarter, eventually? Or, or even deal with violence uh, or a person who is very violent? Oh, you know, yeah. Because, yeah. Do it. Oh, you, yeah, you, that definitely you can. You can yeah. actually remodulate the brain to do those things, and they're working on it. Wow. So, so eventually, they, if a person who is uh, very violent, you know, you have a lot of violent people, especially the ones in prison, uh, who are, are seriously violent, eventually mm -hmm. they can put a chip in a person's head yeah. and, and, and stop him from being that, you know, stop him from being violent. Right, right now they they're they're putting people uh, neurostimulators in people's head to keep them from having seizures. Okay, you know, so mm -hmm. I mean, the answer is yeah, we can stimulate different parts of the brain to do different things. If okay, we st stimulate the amygdala, you stimulate different things, you can get a different response. So yeah, the the, the research is out, and it's just a matter of time before for it it those things become a possibility. So so. Uh... Before we leave, I just want to ask you a couple more questions. What is the next break breakthrough with science, neuroscience? That's a good question. I, I, I think a lot of things are going to be coming out uh, with uh, concussion. Um, I think that's going to be the best, biggest thing that's coming out right now of understanding what 
what happens with the brain when the brain is damaged and how to correct it. Mm-hmm. Um, and liter and literature on that. I mean, I don't really know. You always the question is, what's the next biggest thing? I I, I don't really have any any insight into it because a lot of people are working on different things stem cells you know will something like that work will nerve transplants actually do the job that they said they do um i don't know mm-hmm. i don't know now back to your final reality is there any other more uh books you're planning on writing well i i i plan on writing something about tesla hopefully in the future Tesla. Uh, because that, Tesla's life was really interesting. Yeah. He basically made a project where he was able to, to distribute free energy. Now, mm-hmm. free energy is, is, is there's something good about free energy and is that it's free. Something bad about it is uh, all, all, all the people in the world who produce energy don't like free energy because it, it destroys their business. So if you're able to, to offer energy with a minimal cost, mm-hmm it's going to bring down a lot of very, very rich people. And oh. the, and when, when Tesla died, what's interesting was the FBI raided his office and took all of his papers. Wow. So a lot of what he was doing was completely confiscated by the government. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I'd like to explore that a little bit more, see, see what he was, in, what, what all he was doing, because he was showing that, it, you know, his, his theory was, that you'd have these power plants where you just have to fly or drive by and your car or plane or whatever flying device you t- had would be recharged and you just keep on going. Oh, wow. So the final reality, where can people pick up the book, the final reality? You can Amazon. get that Amazon. You can get it at, at, at the Barnes and Nobles. Uh, not all the star stores are, are uh, marketing them. Some local ones are, but you can get them on their website. Um, I the an iBook or a hard copy. Uh, the mo- two most com- three most common are Nook, uh, I mean the uh, Barnes and Nobles, um, Amazon, and Kobo and iBook. You know, All right. Uh, what, what's your website? Uh, www.martinoauthor.com. All right. That's www.martinoauthor.com. Is there any we, we, any... Yeah, we, before we go, we, we forgot to mention the movie that we're making together. Oh, yeah. Daryl and, Di, yeah, and I are making a movie uh-huh. um, called Enhanced Interrogation. Enhanced Interrogation. You know, we got to do another show on that. Uh, <laughs> we definitely got to do that in the next uh, few days. But, yeah, uh, Enhanced Interrogation. And how's the, uh, uh, how's the trailer? How, is anything? Good, good. I have, I have my 12-year-old son working on it right now. All right. So he, he's done the actually he's done the trailers for my last two books. Yeah, he's and, awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, I know. He's uh, yeah, you know, and I pay him fifty bucks too. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's rich. Yeah. He spends all afternoon making it, and he he thinks he's a rich guy. Why well, spend it together? And it's good father son uh, time. So he's make he's making a uh, uh, the trailer right now. Uh, uh, for the movie, Danny, and what was plan, Danny plan says she's going to get your book tomorrow. Well, well, thank you, Dan. thank you, Dan. Doctor Steve, you know you got to get your show, Doctor Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring you on, Daryl. Yeah, oh. the yeah, voice of the I, people. Yeah, I got a lot of crazy things I can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, like I said, Steve, yeah, the uh, enhanced interrogation. You like, you know, it's it's a, it's a, I think it's an awesome. Uh, short film and you know and, and about you know the with the issues of terrorism in america and uh, we'll definitely be talking about it but we almost about a, almost about an hour we've been on and so we can log on it was a great discussion and uh yeah thank you wayne hundred this is a great discussion we're going to have you back steve and we're definitely going to uh, talk about enhanced interrogation how important a movie like this is you know a movie like this is is to america and to the people to see you know basically what's what's happening in America and that, right. that things that have happened, you know, with terrorism. And uh, right. you know, it's and the, it's sad. And what do you do if you got if you got a terrorist? Yeah, what do you, you do just, if you get a terrorist? And this is the book crossed all party lines. Yeah. I mean we, we take it from different perspectives. What if you what if you actually caught the terrorist we knew some something bad was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, what what would you do? And we have people debating about it. Oh yeah. And it's a high tension film. 
where, where, where it's left you really thinking, your heart pounding to the la very last second. Mm -hmm. we, we, as you know, we already have, we have a director, we have, we have a cast and crew of 30 people. We just need to get the final financing uh, and, and in order to, to do the, the, the complete filming and, and distribution. Yeah, if, if anybody out there who know anybody with with uh, deep pockets that you know that would like to support this uh, movie, you know you can hit us up on Facebook. Uh, you can go to uh, Enhanced Interrogation on Facebook or on Fire Show and with, uh, or myself, Daryl Brooks, and uh, you can also you can hit up Steve Martino. And yeah. uh, like I said, I'd like to thank you, Steve, for coming on the show. Well, thanks, Daryl. That was a good we got, interview. You know what? We got to invite you back on so we can talk about, you know, you just talk about the brain, you know, because I know Charlie Rose. I don't know. Where is Charlie Rose at now? You know, <laughs> he, you know, he did a show. He would do these segments on the brain. Right. You know, and, 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 and they were great set shows, you know, about the brain, because I know a lot of people are very interested. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, and so you know, we just hope that uh, you are you come back on and uh, and, and enjoy it. And so we Thanks. we have uh, I've had a great show. Uh, this is the On Fire show, and so Steve, I'd like to thank you, and uh, make Good sure job, you get Carol. Steve Martino's uh, book, uh, The Final Reality. And uh, yeah, Danny Glover, uh, Danny Collar, I said say Danny Glover, Danny Collar, yeah. please go out there and, and buy that book. And all the other ones, Wayne and, and all the other people who are watching and people who are going to be watching the show. Uh, Steve is an awesome guy and you're an awesome family. How many kids do you have, Steve? I have five. Five kids. Wow. Right, five right. kids. And he's married and uh, he's a, a good family man and a good conservative. So he's, he's an awesome guy and he's out there uh, trying to save us, especially in the mine. You know? yeah, we're try and you're trying to save Trenton. Trying to get that back in place. Yeah, the water problem. Yeah, I can. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Wayne. Wayne said, "Bless us both." Thanks, Wayne. And this is the On Fire show. I like, thank you, Steve. Okay, Steve, you can Take go. Take these, Daryl. All talk right. Talk to you later. I'll talk to you. Thanks for coming on the right. show. Thank you. All right. Hi, this is Daryl McKell Brooks from the On Fire Show. I'd like to thank all y'all for watching. And, uh, you know, we're enjoying ourselves. And I promise you we're going to have more, you know, great interviews. And, you know, I haven't been on radio in, in, for a while. And so I'm getting back into uh, talk radio with this Facebook Live. So I'm just uh, trying to get things right. You know, we're going to definitely have some great interviews. And, uh, you know, I thank you all. For you guys and pray for me and pray for your families and and pray for our president and uh, we want to keep us all safe and and uh, keep America safe and we're making America great again by educating and 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 uh, yes by educating our, our young people and and making sure our young people are strong-minded and and have the will and believe in God and God and country and believe in freedom and liberty. This is the On Fire Show, and we're going to have some great things and talk about some great issues coming over the next week. Uh, as there's so many great things and plans that we have uh, for this show and for America. This is the On Fire Show, your host, Darren McHale Brooks, and I'm out. See you next time.